People expected that maybe at one time, at some time it would happen, but maybe we've been a little bit quicker than they expected. Dr. Ian Wilmot and his team of Scottish researchers began with a six-year-old sheep. They took a single cell from her mammary gland, including its nucleus, the command center containing all the genes, the DNA, that determine the sheep's individual physical characteristics, eyes, nose, hair. Then they took an egg from a second sheep removed its nucleus and replaced it with a cell from that first sheep. The egg and its new nucleus then fused together, turning into an embryo, but with all the genetic characteristics of the first sheep and none of the second. In effect, a carbon copy, an exact duplicate of the first. <laughs> the descent is an especially rare animal because right now there are only about 2.5 barren jacinths in existence that aren't clones. The other ones, in case you're wondering, are the deep mind, the Pauli D, that is kind of a half-breed between a clone and a unique synth, and, maybe surprising to many, the Behringer V-Base effects unit, that has a semi-hidden VA synth mode that I've featured in my video about the V-Base. Today we're talking about the Behringer Neutron, that Behringer's UK team developed using another, lesser known Behringer cloning capacity, namely Cool Audio, and their reissue of the CEM3340, an analog VCOIC of legendary reputation. The 3340 was used in a whole arsenal of cult vintage synths, and to squeeze in yet another video suggestion, the Deep Ace 9, an obscure 90s 303 clone I featured a while ago on this channel. The Neutron is a fairly recent and still very popular unit, but I've decided to feature it on my channel nonetheless, because its popularity and seemingly high number of units sold make it fairly easy to find on the second hand market, where I snagged mine up for less than half of its original price in mint condition. Behringer sure does receive a lot of hate for all the clones they are pumping out or, one should better say, announce in very short succession. And while haters usually agree that they sound much inferior to actual vintage gear, you have to admit that they really put a lot of effort into cloning, going as far as cloning actual vintage ICs to achieve faithful recreations. Along with what you could call its little brother, the Behringer Crave, the Neutron is another very affordable entry into semi-modular synthesis. It's designed following the East Coast school of modular synthesis. East and West Coast are, in case you don't know, terms used to refer to different approaches to analog synthesis, deriving from the fact that Buckler and Moog, two early players in the synth game, were situated on the West and East Coast of the US respectively. While West Coast synthesis revolves more around sedative synthesis, the East Coast was built around subtractive synthesis. A quick hint here, if you're looking for an affordable entry into West Coast style synthesis, check out the Volca Modular I featured on this channel too. So, as East Coast means subtractive, of course you are presented with the holy trinity of subtractive synthesis, VCO, VCF and VCA, which are all present in the Neutron, even if the sheer number of controls makes this a little less obvious than with other synths. The Neutron adds two more elements into the signal path and analog overdrive section between the VCO and the VCF, it can be skipped by routing the VCA output straight into the VCF input and a bucket brigade delay that is a little harder to skip. You'll have to route audio from the VCA output directly to your mixer using a 3.5mm to quarter inch adapter or cable. So once again, the neutron signal path is VCO to overdrive to VCF to VCA to delay. The individual sections come with lots of controls too. You can set tuning, shape, range and pulse width for the VCOs, drive tone and level for the overdrive, mode frequency, resonance, mod def and envelope def, and of course the ADSR envelope itself for the VCF, the ADSR envelope and VCA bias for the VCA, and finally time, repeats and mix for the delay. In terms of modifiers and modulators, the Neutron is pretty well equipped too. The single digitally generated LFO comes with five different waveforms. There is also a sample and hold generator that is fed from the internal noise generator. The back is a lot less crowded. You get audio in, out, headphone in and separate volume controls for the headphones, as well as dip switches for the MIDI channel selection, OG and USB MIDI connectors and a power switch and connector. Back on the front the true staff to shows the 32 input and 24 output patch bay that allows the user to break up and recombine many of the pre-wired internal connections and create wonderfully weird signal and modulation routes. You can connect multiple neutrons or make the neutron part of your modular setup too this way. But before we even start to dive into this subject, let's listen to some basic sounds realized with the pre-wired connections. I will skip through a few patches on the same sequence utilizing the amazing wonders of video editing.
For the next part I've tried to recreate some drum sounds by dialing in some percussive patches. I've sampled the drum sounds, I've created and turned them into a drum kit, which you can also download, you'll find the link in the description. I've had the samples into caustic, As the neutron has an audio input, let's feed the sequence back into the neutron itself. For the last part I've tried to create a randomized patch. The way this patch works is, I have sample and hold spit out some random values for the VCO frequencies, while at the same time varying the waveform shapes of both VCOs through the LFO for VCO1 and the first envelope for VCO2. MIDI notes fed to the neutron rhythmically re-trigger the envelope and the LFO. Thank you. 
So, while I've barely scratched the surface of what you can do with the Neutron, I hope I've still been able to show you how much awesomeness you can expect from this very affordable machine. I've decided to follow this video up with another video on some patching basics, so if I've got you hooked on the Neutron, stay tuned. As I've said earlier, I've got this Neutron for around 150 euros. Now I usually see them listed for a little higher at 180 to 200 euros, I guess that this is still a pretty sweet deal for what you can get out of a Neutron. At this price I'm not at all surprised to see people buying two or even three Neutrons to turn them into a seriously powerful synth and... Breaking news! While I was working on this video, Behringer announced a beefed up Neutron successor, the Proton, which looks like it's going to be even more awesome. I might have to look out for one of those instead of a second Neutron. Or maybe both, so I can make myself a tasty triple synth sandwich. Anyways, see you soon with another synth.